calling the committee of the whole meeting for May 16th, our first one of the year. Um, we'll do a quick roll call. Um, I'll have, sure, go ahead. I'll have the clerk do that. Alderperson Ackley? Here. Alderperson Decker? Here. Alderperson Feldy? Here. Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Here. Alderperson Heideman? Here. Alderperson Mitchell? Here. Alderperson Perella? Here. Alderperson Rust? Here. Alderperson Salazar? Here. Alderperson Ramey? Here. There are 10 present. Thank you. Uh, we'll start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. We'll start out with uh, approval of minutes from our October 18th, 2021 meeting. Uh, do we have a motion? So. For, sure, looking for a motion. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion on those minutes? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Those are approved. Okay, we're going to start right out with the, um, oh, do we, excuse me, do we have any public forum? No one is Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, we're going to start right out with the presentation. Um, Chad's going to start uh, start things out here. So, uh, let's see. Uh, here we go. Go ahead, Chad. Thank you, Chair. So, we're here this evening to hear a presentation from Baker Tilly, uh, who has been retained by the City of Sheboygan to work on the strategic plan updates. So, a number of you on the council. Um, that were with us last year in the last council session were part of um, some interviews uh, through the different uh, processes. There's been some focus groups, a community survey. So uh, we felt as staff it was a good time to bring the council up to speed on where the strategic plan process is before we dive into working as staff on action steps and priorities for the future. Um, so Baker Tilly, there's two gentlemen, Chris and David, who are doing this remote versus traveling here. Um, they will be here in, pre in, in person for the final presentation in the coming months, but they'll be doing this presentation remote and giving the uh, council and the committee of the whole an update as to where they are with the process. So I think with that, I'll turn it over to David or Chris. I'll be starting, Shad. Thank you. This is David. Um, uh, good evening, um, uh, members of the uh, Board of Aldermen. My name is David Eisenlor. I'm a managing director with Baker Tilly and um, the overall director of the strategic planning uh, project and been very actively involved in, in what you're about to see and learn about uh, tonight. I'll let my colleague Chris introduce himself uh, as well. Thanks, David, and hi, everyone. Good evening. It's good to see you again, and um, yeah, thank you for your time. Looking forward to giving you this update tonight. So if we can go to the next slide, Chris. Um, we've um, planned a, 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 a overview of the process that we've been through, where we are in that process, and kind of a high-level summary of, of uh, s some of the things that we've learned over the course of this uh, project. So. Uh, on the left side of the of the slide, you'll see what um, tasks, major tasks within our work plan have been completed. We've done the internal stakeholder engagement. That's the interviews with many of you, with staff members and so forth. We've done an outreach um, process with several community uh, groups, and you're going to learn more about all of these, the results of all of these uh, in a moment. We did a what we've called a resident input questionnaire uh, online to gather um, information and input into the strategic plan from kind of all comers, anyone who wanted to uh, participate. We then did a uh, visioning workshop session with the mayor and uh, the administrator and the other senior members of the team, the department directors, and have got some preliminary goals and objectives uh, that emerged from that uh, work visioning session that we're going to share with you. Um, as Chad um, mentioned or, or certainly um, alluded to, this is a, indeed a work in progress. So 
Um, from the high level framework you're going to see uh, this evening, we are now working uh, together with the staff to build out the, 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 uh, the structure of the, the plan and the details of the plan in terms of goals, objectives, initiatives, or, and priorities. And we will um, be, be then preparing a, a, a preliminary draft uh, once that work is, uh, is completed to share with you. And then uh, based on that, that, uh, that review and comment on that, uh, that draft will then of course create the final document and, uh, and, and uh, deliver that to you. The next slide um, is really where uh, Chris is gonna uh, take over. He was a, an active participant in the outreach and engagement piece and he'll walk you through what we learned from those various um, groups and individuals that we interacted with uh, during that phase of the engagement. So go ahead, Chris. Great, yeah, thank you, David. And uh, if you remember back in December, we met with, uh, we spent about a week uh, at City Hall and met with quite a few people. Uh, so here's just kind of a, a full list of all of those that we met during the discovery phase interviews and all the elected officials and uh, the department heads uh, with the staff and uh, had some focus groups as well with um, some, kind of uh, supervisory roles as well. And we enjoyed uh, the conversations. We learned a lot uh, about the city, kind of the challenges, the strengths. And uh, it kind of, as a result, we really observed some, uh, some common themes. Some, we had some reoccurring topics come up during those conversations. And um, here's just a, a quick summary. It's about six items. Um, you know, municipal infrastructure came up quite a bit mostly related to the, the need for road improvements, um, concerns around a cost to make, uh, to the cost for infrastructure improvements, um, and some other various topic areas, but those were kind of the big ones. Um, another one probably that came up just about as much was the, uh, oh, can everyone see my screen okay? Yep. Oh, great, okay. Um, was community, excuse me, communication and engagement. Um, and again, mostly related to the, the need for improvements to the website, uh, but also kind of making sure that there's a, uh, a plan in place to make sure everyone's on the same page in terms of whatever kind of um, communication is coming out of, of the city. Uh, another big one, which uh, you, I believe we're talking about a little bit earlier this evening was housing choice. Um, it, we heard a lot about the efforts that the city's been making uh, and very positive, strong efforts. And we also talked about the concerns uh, still about the availability of affordable housing, uh, housing for uh, em employees, uh, senior housing, and uh, some challenges uh, related to community opposition um, to increased housing density. Uh, economic development and tourism uh, came up a lot. This is a very positive thing. A lot of people know that about Sheboygan. Um, and it was the conversation related mostly about how to capitalize on opportunities that, uh, that Sheboygan's greatly positioned in and ways to, to work better as a, as, a, as a group with all of the various economic development and tourism uh, groups in the region. Operational excellence is uh, one kind of term that we've coined, but it covered a, a lot of topics and uh, it's really related to internal operations, um, it, whether it be um, internal organizational culture and where the, the city can make improvements in that area, technology improvements uh, to make things more efficient. Um, so a lot of kind of internal things that the, the city, a lot of stuff is going well and a lot of areas for opportunity for improvement. And then the other, the last major theme was quality of life. Um, and this kind of uh, happened, this conversation came up um, mainly when like economic development or tourism conversation was happening. And it's a very positive piece of, of the city that there's a lot of great parks, a lot of recreational offerings. The library is great. Uh, arts and culture available in the city, but it's just a lot of um, how to make it better, how to continue to improve. Um, so after we had met with everybody internally, we then uh, developed a plan to uh, 
set up uh, community focus groups. And here's kind of a, a quick summary of, of all of those sessions. Over about a month and a half span or so, uh, we hosted nine virtual group sessions to listen and learn to those in the community. And, and here's a list of those that we met with um, from uh, small business owners, large business owners, uh, neighborhood groups, social service organizations, uh, tourism groups, those uh, involved in the effort, uh, the housing efforts, uh, families, uh, representatives from the school, uh, community arts and culture groups, and elevating diverse voices. And similar to the internal stakeholder piece, uh, we heard a lot of great things and a lot of reoccurring topics came up. And, and here's kind of, a, again, just a very quick summary of those topic areas. And uh, as you'll see, shopping, restaurants in the downtown region, you know, where uh, you can increase some available uh, different stores that are available, increase the uh, types of um, restaurants that are available, and how can you make the downtown uh, better? Community, um, and this was, I'm looking at my notes here, Community was related to uh, the location, the strength, uh, how that is a strength uh, to Sheboygan, and uh, again, how to kind of capitalize on, on the position that Sheboygan is in. Um, you know, it was noted that the city is making uh, efforts to, um, oh, excuse me, that's a, a different section. Um, Oh, pardon me. So yes, that's kind of where the, the most of the conversation was related to. Uh, communication, collaboration, and clarification of roles and responsibilities. Similar to how it was mentioned during the internal stakeholder piece uh, of how to best get on the same page, make sure all types of communication, everything that is being uh, communicated, everyone's on the same page. This was related to you know, who, what organization within the community is responsible for uh, a, a certain a certain area and working together and making sure that everyone knows what roles and responsibilities they have and, it, and it's clear. Um, business and workforce, again, I kind of mentioned it earlier, um, the, pardon me, lost track of my notes here. This was related to uh, just the challenges that uh, businesses are having to attract workers, and sometimes it was related to housing, which uh, was also noted. Um, the uh, talent and time to uh, ability to attract talent. Um, community amenities was another big one. Mentioned it earlier, uh, very same themes, how Sheboygan is greatly positioned with the great parks, with the lakefront. Um, and Lastly, again, I mentioned housing, and that one came up quite a bit. And then in addition to that, at the same time uh, as we were having these community uh, focus groups, we sent out a resident input questionnaire. Uh, and we had some a great response rate, uh, just over 1,800 responses, which was very good. We were happy to see that. Uh, about uh, of those that responded, uh, about 38% had been living uh, in Sheboygan from uh, zero years to 10 years, and about 61% of the respondents had been living in Sheboygan between 11 and 25 years. Um, we were most excited of the wide range of age groups that responded to the questionnaire, as, as you can see here. Uh, it's pretty consistent in, across the board uh, from those in their teens, mid-20s, people in their 30s, and, and then uh, and older. It was consistent across the board. And uh, on the right there, you see is a kind of a fun way to display um, the a word cloud, a fun way to display the, the words that people use to describe uh, the opportunities that Sheboygan, in their opinion, Sheboygan has available. And uh, just a few to mention were kind of, again, the downtown businesses, how to improve that, uh, capitalizing on just the position the geographical location that Sheboygan is in and the lakefront available, the need for new or affordable housing, uh, diversity, and a uh, sense of community. So 
So uh, that's a very quick summary, uh, but it was a, a, a long process and we learned quite a bit. And um, I'll turn it back over to David and all that we learned there uh, is what uh, kind of helped us drive the conversation during the, the visioning workshop. David, I think you might be on mute. Thank you, sir. I was. Um, go ahead and advance the slide, if you would, Chris. So um, we gathered at the uh, the marina with the mayor, the uh, the administrator, and the senior members of the of the uh, of the city staff, the director level <laughs> folks, to think a lot about the future vision and direction of the uh, city and what that meant in terms of uh, setting a set of uh, ultimately goals, objectives, and initiatives. Uh, to move the city in that direction. And the first thing that we did was a little visioning activity, um, which involved a, 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 a set of about 250 photographic images that we asked the participants to browse, to look at, and to to pick one that that said something to them about what their personal view and, 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 and vision for the city of Sheboygan um, is. And you can see what some of those images look like. And then they described why they picked those images. And you've got a sampling of some of the words that they use. And I want to read them all, but they were about recreation and industry, both a balance of those unity, teamwork, adventure, so all, all sorts of um, really wonderful ideas and thoughts about, about the, the community and, and how special uh, it is. Go, go ahead, Chris. So we then did a, um, a, a word cloud exercise using some uh, online polling. So this word cloud was built by the group uh, in real time. Uh, and the larger the word, the more uh, it was mentioned and more times it was mentioned by the, by, by the participants and, and therefore are some of the stronger themes that came out of that visioning process and that you can see it in this uh, diversity and safety and fun and comfortable and growing is is descriptors uh, that that the team uh, came up with each individually but again where you see those larger uh, uh, print words those those were really consistent that that meant more than one and sometimes m many more than one uh, individuals cited those as a part of their own personal vision for the community. Uh, next slide. We did kind of a classic uh, exercise uh, or of strategic planning called a, uh, a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And again, this is a little bit of an eye chart here, and so I don't want to read it to you, but this is really a, a it, while we did the visioning to sort of focus on where we, where we want to take the community, this was really a, a close look at the organization itself and what, what we needed, what did we do well? What do we currently do well? Where do we need to get better? What things in the external environment worry us that, that, that could threaten us and we need to think about how we adapt and mitigate those threats? And then if all of those things are true, what are at least some of the um, of the opportunities that uh, that await us? And and so those you see in the upper uh, upper right quadrant uh, in the little starburst things. And and these I'll I'll read back to you if I can read see them. So internal uh, operational in, in, in uh, improvement. We can be a better organization. We can do a better job in 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 our investments in our our capital. That relates to the uh, infrastructure. Uh, issue. We need to do a better job and have real opportunities to build strong partnerships with the community. Some of those organizational relationships that Chris alluded to in the, um, the community feedback, but generally a theme of uh, we've got an opportunity to, to do a better job in the partnership area. Um, there was a recognition that you, the, the Board of Aldermen, represented an opportunity in terms of the kind of shifts that's gone 
gone uh, th that's happened with the makeup of the board with a a young and and newer council member bringing fresh ideas and how do we as a as an organization together take advantage of that there's an opportunity to attract new business um there's um opportunities in downtown there's opportunities to do a much better job of telling our own story running, rather than letting others tell it for us. Um, we have an opportunity to, to build our workforce, to train and development that workforce, and we can continue to grow in a strategic way. So that was, that was a really important part of what we talked about is thinking about what we're good at, what we're not so good at, and what scares us is that, is that then what do we see as, as some of the, of the real important opportunities uh, for us to grab. Next slide. So we did, and you're gonna see some photographs in a minute of what this exercise looked like, but it was a, it was, some of you have probably been through these in your, in your work or at school, but a, a sticky note uh, exercise. And we, we used a big graphical template and asked all of the um, members working there together to reflect on the vision and reflect on the SWOT analysis, and then using little sticky notes, write down sort of very specific needs. That's the black text on, on here that they felt like uh, looking out into the future, the city needed to take. And there you can see there of all different kinds of, of uh, 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 viewpoints and perspectives and level of detail, um, but that was the idea. We were really focusing on qu quantity of ideas, not necessarily qu quality. In other words, we advised everyone to say, look, we've got we've to enter this process and behave with an open mind. And so no one criticized the, um, these ideas. Um, they, they all got a chance to talk about them and tell people why they thought they were important. And then I had them literally reshuffle all of the uh, sticky notes in the in the clusters that represented um, some common themes or, or or potentially goals, and that's what you see in the colored text. So one was to practice intentional communication and engagement, and you're going to see, I hope, the linkage between what we heard from the internal and the external focus group. We got to get better and being really intentional about how we engage the community and how we communicate and tell our story. We've got to build community alliances. That's the partnership idea. That's an important strategic goal for us. We've got to, to do a better job of, of uh, on the community leadership uh, process, the governance process, in, in interestingly, on uh, thinking about uh, how you use your authority to appoint um, people to committees, boards, commissions, and outreach recruitment of folks to get involved. Uh, in 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 the city, and and also to do a better job. The staff is telling itself we need, need to do a better job of helping the council understand what it is we do, the details of the of the operations of of the city. You can see advanced human capital was all about the the, the, the city's workforce. You know how can we make sure that we can evaluate people well, that we get employees to buy into our mission and vision, that we can our leaders are held accountable and so forth. A uh, 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 fourth one was co continuous improvement. That's what we called uh, earlier on, what Chris alluded to as operational excellence. How do we operate more efficiently as a city? Um, uh, infrastructure investments, a big theme we heard in the, in the outreach uh, is an important goal. And then inclusive and supportive culture. So that's about the, the organizational culture and in terms of um, making sure that we're engaging and, 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 and being inclusive with our, with our employees, uh, building a, a robust DEI plan, working to eliminate any negativity in our culture uh, over time. So the, those were the big ideas that came out of this. Next, next slide, Chris. So we started looking at that list and this was getting fairly close to the end of the day. And you say, you, you know what? Most, not all, but most of what we talked about during our full day together, what we could really look at as, as being as much about the organizational needs and less about the community priorities. 
And so we, 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 we started to talk about that and, and concluded that the strategic plan as we develop it really needs to, to, to be written in such a way that we acknowledge the, the, the importance of both of those. And, say, and so we, we invented some new terms and these are still, uh, still a work in progress. But we said that what, what the, the sticky note exercise told us was that our, our priorities as an organization are around stewardship of our resources around uh, nurturing and growing and strengthening our uh, human capital. It's about in, uh, building the kind of culture that we want to have an inclusive, uh, diverse culture within the organization and this continuous improvement idea, the always getting better and always getting more, be more efficient. On the community side, they said, here are the kinds of things that we believe that we were hearing from that outreach, and we also went back and took a look at the 2018 version of the of the uh, strategic plan to see what kind of persistent ideas that are were, were relevant then might still be persistent today. And again, we came up with four broad categories. We, we the community wants us to elevate the quality of life in Sheboygan, and that has to do with uh, revitalized neighborhoods. That's where housing fits. We need to, to, to leverage and improve and expand our parks and open space, uh, an, an important part of our community identity and potentially also an economic development a, a, um, uh, asset. We, we, we talked about the, the development of third spaces. This had to do with um, uh, new kinds of venues, dining, entertainment, those kinds of things, and then strengthening our parks and leisure services, recreation kinds of things, all of those being sort of a sub subset of what is quality of life. He said we want to, we, we, the community expects us to have a robust infrastructure, uh, both in, in terms of the uh, uh, traditional infrastructure like streets and utilities, but also um, facilities. We want to think about our growth to make sure that we're growing in a sustainable, strategic way. And then again, the community expects us to to, to build, a, build, a, build a sense of belonging among, uh, among the people and the businesses of the community and building and, 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 and strengthening alliances. So this, this is what we ended the day with as, as these really kind of eight priorities, half of which are focused on the organization and half of which on the community. So, so next, Chris. So, um, well, let me, let me back up for a second. Um, so what next after after those goals and objectives and we alluded to this uh, earlier early on well we now have to build out sort of the understructure of that what specific things in the way of supporting objectives and action items um, need to be taken in order to drive that that vision and to accomplish those big picture goals the next few slides that would just page through kind of quickly are just to give you sort of a sense of a feel of what this workshop looked like. We did it, I think, as I mentioned, at, to the, at the marina. There's a part, of, there's Chris leading the, uh, the uh, SWOT analysis and our, our other colleague who is with us. This is where we were, were really talking and there was some kind of um, spirited dialogue about, about what we're good at and maybe not what we're good at and, and having people sort of clarify that. And you can see here that we had lots of different ideas about, about that. And we ultimately sort of shifted and shifted these things around to, to make sure that we had them right, that the strengths were right and the weaknesses were right and so forth. And Chris apparently enjoyed doing it. <laughs> so, so, so that's how Roy was feeling at the end of the day. He was all, all happy. And everything. So that's an so, overview uh, of where, where we are. And uh, Chris will kind of wrap us up here. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, no, they, I, I don't have anything else to add. That was, uh, we've enjoyed working with you guys uh, to, up to this point and, and continue to look forward to um, kind of defining everything and um, fine tuning this. We're happy to answer questions, any, any feedback or questions. We want you as the uh, policymakers to really have a sense of where we're going directionally and to make sure that we, that we're not missing things that, uh, that you consider really important before we, um, uh, um, spend additional time sort of building out that framework if, if the framework isn't, isn't, isn't pretty close to right. So we're looking for your feedback uh, at this point. All righty, well, we'll start taking questions. I see Barb's got on the queue right away, so I'll put her right up there, Barb. Thank you so much. Um, this was very interesting and 
uh, of course, it piqued my interest on having a hard copy of this. Are, are we going to get one of those so that we can look it over and, you know, maybe do some strategic planning for it? Is, um, is that directed to, to us or to the, uh, to the well, staff on the um, uh, distribution? Chad, Chad's got his, his, his uh, hand open, so we're going to let him, let him answer that. Thank you. So we can forward this presentation digitally, and if you need a copy printed, I'd be happy to print a copy of it after this presentation, um, whatever, whatever would help with you guys analyzing kind of what's here so far. Okay, I'm okay with the digital. Um, then it, it's on my computer, and I can look at it whenever I want. Okay, next up is uh, Roberta. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I, I was intrigued with the fact that staff had the ability that they were interviewed, and then they had the ability to cohese as a group and move priorities and think about priorities. Um, the alders had the ability to do one-on-one. -on -one. Will the alders likewise get an opportunity to cohese as a group with sticky notes, et cetera, because I think our perspective is different than staff perspective. I expect that we'll end up with the same with the same big chunks. So I don't think we need to reinvent chunks, but will we have that opportunity? Is that is that in the future? So what I would say to that is it's very difficult to do that. Um, I, it's gonna have to be strategic because it needs to be a public meeting because we have a quorum of the council present. And I think that's why we went the route of trying to work with the department heads first to um, try to hone in on this a little bit. Um, I, I guess if there's a way of being able to do this in a public setting with a agenda posted and, and meeting open meeting laws, I mean, it, it's something we could look at, but I know that we've struggled in the past with the quorum issues, and I don't know if Chuck Adams has any further thoughts on that, not to put them on the spot, but that's kind of the, the challenge, I think, is the uh, open meeting requirements. Mm -hmm. Chuck, you wanna answer that? Well, it, it would have to be in a, in a public meeting, uh, but that's, I mean, anytime you meet, it's in a public meeting, mm -hmm. so I don't necessarily seeing that see that as a big barrier. Uh, you would post the meeting and you would mm -hmm. do things in public. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to give the public the opportunity to speak just in the same way as you do a public forum, you can limit it. And you would just do the same thing, it's just that you might have an audience, okay. as Thank you should. You. <laughs> Thank you. Gracias. Yes, would it be possible to bring up the, um, the presentation again? Sure. Chris, can you uh, share that again? Do you have a particular slide you want us to go to? Unfortunately, I didn't note down <laughs> which slide that was. Okay, <laughs> topic, do you remember? Uh, yes, so the question I have, and maybe then you would be, fine, you would be able to identify the subject, is um, some of the statements that you took note of are slightly obscure to me, at least three or four of them, and I wonder if you gave us the extreme synthesis of what you heard, and but you have more content to those statements, or those statements are just the way you receive them, and you would not be able to expand on those. For um, example, so for example, there was, I, I believe there was one uh, slide where there were two or three statements where that I, I just cannot relate, I don't know what they mean. And one of them, one of them uh, refers to the negative cultures. So would you be able to add some more understanding of that statement that you got during the interview or work, or is just 
the statement itself. Let, let, let me take a swing at that and, and then maybe um, either Chad or Todd might want to, to weigh in on that. What you are seeing in, in all of those uh, slides from the community engagement process is our uh, attempt to distill into very few words what was an, a, a, um, a, 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 an extensive amount of input and, and data. And there is um, additional detail that, that, that um, that would flesh those those concepts um, out, um, and so um, that was just our attempt to to figure out a way to summarize the results thematically, uh, and and not um, to put in this slide presentation all of the detail that we have, but there is significant detail behind all of that. So you would be able to expand on some of these for us to understand it better. Yes, we certainly could could do that. We spent a, a good bit of time, and and I should have mentioned this um, when uh, when we met with the staff at the at the marina in going over um, some of that 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 more granular detail that we that we had, and um, trying to get real real clarity. And they asked really really good questions about that uh, about that data. So again, it does it, it does exist. When would that be a good time to to have that understanding? Okay, go ahead. One. Chad's got some. Go ahead. Can, so, for the purpose of this discussion, David and Chris, can you go to the slide that's got the multicolored headings and then the black underneath it with multiple things on it? That's the one where it references, I think, the concerns of Alder Perella. Yes, that the bottom on this slide is where it says work to eliminate negative cultures. Is this the slide you're referring to? Yes. So I think what the, and David is, you know, answering it. So I think it's a cumulation of everything that they've seen to date and heard um, and put into these. And then these working strategic goals and objectives, if, correct me if I'm wrong, David, but this is really uh, the, taking that information that you presented in all the engagement and working with the staff and coming up with um, some buckets to try to put this stuff in, is that correct? Yes, and I and, and thank you, uh, Chad, for, for recognizing that this was the particular slide that the older person was uh, looking at. So so the, the extensive amount of detail that I was talking about uh, a minute ago was related to what we learned in that engagement process, both the internal interviews and in the uh, focus groups and in the uh, online questionnaire. Though this material that you're looking at right now came from that sticky note um, exercise. And so this, I, I, I do recall some of this, um, uh, uh, just how it sort of unfolded in, in the workshop. There were several members of the, of the management team that in, you know, talking about um, what kinds of things do we need to be better at is, is, uh, is strengthening our, our culture and recognizing that there might well be pockets within the uh, city organization that could, could use some, some, um, some strengthening and some, 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 po some, some, some positive uh, movement in, in the culture. So the detail behind that is not as voluminous as, um, as the community engagement, it's it's on a series of literally post-it notes that we then then we use to summarize and characterize uh, what those notes meant. Again, I hope that answers your question because I I answered a different question now than I than you asked. Uh, go ahead, Gracia. So you, you did actually, thank you. And so that slide then, if I understand it correctly, is a combination of um, the internal sticky notes exercise and everything else, right? So would you remember? Yes. yes. I'm sorry, Look, I, I stepped on you. Please finish your thought, I'm sorry. Would you also, I'm just curious, uh, know the always be true truthful, I believe, to ourselves. I don't have the slide right now. 
uh, where does that come from? Try or we stay out. true to ourselves? It's another one which is kind of vague, and so I, I am trying to understand the, the content, the, the substance of it. Always stay true to ourselves. Yes, right there, up, uh, 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 up there at the top. I'll have to be honest with you, Alderperson. I don't have a particular recollection of exactly where that one came from and what what it uh, uh, represents, other than it related to a culture. And I think it had to do with being uh, public servants and, and being uh, and being proud of being public servants and and. Um, and, ma and making sure that we we do the things that we know to be right. At least that's how I would um, interpret it. And if and if and if any on the staff want to correct me on that, that'd be fine. But that's certainly how I read it. Chief Domagowski has something to add to it. Um, sure, I recall the discussion being we were talking about many different things, but some of them, what were other cities doing? Um, what direction should we move in? And one of the thoughts that was brought up is that we have to remain true to what Sheboygan is too, and not necessarily try to change the strengths of what our community already offers. Thank you, thank you both. Okay, all righty. Uh, I guess Roberta's got a comment here. Thank you. Um, that the slide that was just up um, was fairly meaty and I could relate to that. But then we got to the end and we had a slide that had organizational priorities and community priorities. And I didn't see very much of a bridge between the slide that we just saw and the organizational priorities, stewardship, human capital, inclusive culture, continuous improvement. Uh, you can open any business book and you can see those four things in it. So. Mm -hmm. Did, how did you how did you arrive at that? Okay, so um, part of that, and, and and this is this is still a work in progress, and so so the wordsmithing isn't uh, isn't necessarily uh, complete, but it was as I uh, attempted to convey a recognition that there was something incomplete in everyone's mind on that multicolored slide that, that it did not describe uh, in a comprehensive enough way where our where all of our priorities are and that just as as a part of the process or uh, uh, any number of reasons who knows we've stood stepped back from that uh, group of sticky notes and asked the question is this complete and the answer was no, it wasn't complete. The answer is, is that we talked more about the organization and, and our priorities as you know leaders within the organization, which you, you would expect, and less about, not with not completely absent, but less about what 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 we need to do as an organization to address the priorities of the community. So that's when we just made uh, the 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 um, recommendation to the group that what we ought to do is 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 in effect bifurcate those ideas and say our strategic plan will address both the uh, the needs of the organization the strategic needs of the organization and the strategic needs of the community and that those words that are there we just sort of brainstormed them on 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 the spot just to capture the idea of um, we've got to address both and 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 not just one. So there's some crossover. If you look at at, at the uh, the multicolored slide, you'll see, for example, in, infrastructure is 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 on there. Uh, I think that's one that 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 uh, sort of found its way to the community side rather than the organizational side. So it's not completely true that everything on that multicolored slide was only internally focused, but it was more heavily weighted than that. I'm sorry I talked so long, but that was the way it unfolded. Uh, follow up on that? Thank you. Um, I, I, and, and the thing that I see that dropped off was communications and engagement. That doesn't show up anywhere in organizational priorities or community priorities, but it was one of the seven or eight on those colored places. So, so. I, I guess my question is, 
have you lost something by trying to condense it so much? It, that's a possibility, older person, and we'll certainly go back, make a note of that, and go back. I'm, I can tell you with real confidence because of exactly what you're um, uh, noticing is that uh, improvement of communication and engagement um, will be prominent within the plan. Sort of the art of doing these plans, it's less, it's more art than science. Maybe it's a craft is making sure that you find the right level for each idea. So some ideas rise to the level of a strategic goal, which is going to be something that's very durable and per persistent. And at the opposite end, there are certain things that are really tasks that you might finish in the course of a year or two. So we've got all of those um, ideas within, uh, I'll use your, your, your great word for it, various buckets, and, and, and it'll all be there in the plan. Uh, but I'm, we'll take, uh, and, and don't let me put words in your mouth, we'll take from your comment that you would like to see that communication and, and engagement rise to the level of one of those eight uh, or, or nine, like you said, it does, there's no magic number there, uh, top level goals. Is that a fair recap? Well, sure, but that that's, my, my observation was a little broader than that. Um, uh, I, I just want to have captured all the richness of all of the input and it just felt like after all the sticky notes and everything and you came up with organizational and community priorities that it got sanitized and I don't want it to get sanitized. And I do understand okay. that you need to focus so that so that you can actually build a strategic plan. I, I don't have any problem with that. So I guess maybe go back and craft some words and make them richer than a business book index. Okay, thank, All right. you. That, thank you. That's exactly the kind of feedback we're looking for and we appreciate it. Okay, uh, anyone else have? I guess that's it. Uh, any other comments from anyone? Okay. Um, then Chad, you want to add, add, you wanna have a have a little bit of follow up with this at all, Chad, or is this pretty much? <laughs> I, I guess, um, and I'm going to throw Todd in the mayor on the. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, is it the is it the wish of this group to spend multiple hours trying to go through? As exercise similar to what the department heads went through, and and I'm not sure if it's in the evening or it's a Saturday or a Sunday um, to try to engage in, or do you want to get uh, you want us to? I, I'll tomorrow morning send you this slide deck, and if there's anything else that comes to mind, you share that with staff, and we share it with the consultant. So I guess the question is, you know what. What is the feel of the committee of the whole from you know this point forward? What what we had in the plan was that um, you know we would take any input that anybody has and let you have some time to digest it and give some additional input if needed. Um, have another committee of the whole meeting if that's what it takes, or you know, or just share that with staff and then we'll you know take it to the next step and try to get a little bit more detail on the strategic goals and some of the priorities and next steps related to laying that out and then come back and have dialogue related to that. I guess where we're at is we didn't want to spend a ton of time putting a lot of detail into all of this stuff if the council wasn't on board with this high level stuff. Um, so that's why we thought it was a good point to come at this time and, and share what's been uh, received to date. So I guess we need some direction from this body as to where you would like us to go from here. Okay, um, well then I'm gonna send it right to Todd then and let's see his comments. Thank you, Chair. This was to bring the information together. This is the second you know, official strategic plan. So it's very difficult. There's a lot of, a lot of data. Um, I guess my suggestion to the council would be that we, we do a, a, a committee of the whole and we can kind of get the alders to kind of participate kind of like the 
department heads did and maybe take that information and um, review it as a group to get that, that, inter, that, that involvement. Um, it's a lot of data, it's a lot of work, but we, we need input from the council on what steps you'd like us to take next. Okay. Mayor? Thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, and obviously, you know, only a few, few folks have spoke, but I think it's just, you know, it might be helpful to go down the line really quick just to get a good sense of, of what everyone is thinking. I mean, this is the strategic plan for the next few years, not only for the city as an organization, but the city as a leader and the 50,000 individuals that we represent. So when we get a kick at the can, we gotta make sure that we're kicking the can and doing it right. For all the different components, communications, operations, how we're spending our money, how we're fixing the roads, how we're making our community safe, parks, you know, this, these are, this is the big, you know, big picture. So we get, we got to do it right. So, you know, we don't, you know, I, I know I brought this up during the process, you know, at what point do we bring in the council? Cause I get the general sense that as elected officials, you want to, you know, have a kick at the can and a say um, through your two cents and in the process. Cause you know, at the end of the day, you're the folks that, you know, well, I do too, but you're the folks that get the constituent calls, you know, about well, what are you doing? Well, you're spending this money. What's this project for, you know, and how do all these puzzle pieces fit together? You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a full day strategic planning session, unless you want that. Um, I know I'm busy, but um, but it could be a condensed version, you know, two hours. Kind of a reader's digest. Committee the whole is the platform to do this stuff. You know, it's I always say it's the casual common council, you know, so we can have more open conversations until you give the mayor the mic and then you just blah, 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 blah. So I'll stop, <laughs> okay. but that's just my two cents. I, we want your input, we want your advice. If we're going in the right direction, what are we missing? You know, how we can finer tune the engine um, and just make our community a better place. This is the opportunity to do it, so. Okay, well then I'm gonna follow uh, follow the line and Grazia is next one on, on the line. Oh, I'll get you in the queue, you'll be next. Okay, Grazia. Yes, um, I do agree that I, we want to be active participants as a common council um, as much as possible. And that is also the reason that I, I think that we may need a little bit more, again, the, the word that comes to mind is expansion on some of the items that we have um, read tonight, learned about tonight. Because if the concept are presented in I understand the idea of the synthesis, but if the concepts are presented in um, in a vague format, it's very hard to relate to those, uh, and it's very hard to understand what is the need behind it. Uh, so that is what I, I think. Again, I think yes, we should be be. Um, engage as much as possible and also be provided a little bit more content behind the, the synthetic versions of the findings in order to relate to, to those better. Okay, thanks Grazia. Uh, Roberta, here's your chance. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> and this might be for our city attorney. It would be my, my wish that we convene, you know, at, at the marina and do it like on a Saturday morning for three hours max because it's a, this is a fairly constrained space in order to do that. So is it legit that we could post a meeting and say it's a strategic planning meeting and hold it elsewhere? Maybe the meeting? Mead Library, wherever. As long as it's in the city, you're okay. good. And it's public. And okay. As long as the public can get there, you're Perfect. good. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, Alder Bruce Mitchell. Thank you, Chair. I just had a, a couple comments on one theme that I've been hearing of. The council being involved in this process is most certainly important. As we're, our role is setting policy and this is somewhat going to dictate the direction that policy is going for the next half decade or so. Uh, but one thing, uh, looking back to the SWOT analysis session, if we had 
uh, city staff doing that and spending what looked like a good amount of time. Uh, they're here more often than we are. They're the ones that are working in the building every day and I just wanna make sure that we take into consideration that the opinion of city staff shouldn't just be set over to the side if we uh, do a planning session ourselves, because that's giving us real insights into what the people leading and working in all the departments believe changes, uh, or I guess the general direction needs to be for them to be the most successful. So I would caution us against duplicating anything that's already been done, unless we already have a plan on how we are going to integrate the outcome of the two of them. Alrighty, well, I would I would agree with that, um, but I also think we we should have a, like a, like you said a, a short session, like, you know, a, a couple hours that we should can work go through the, some of the stuff, not putting aside staff following through and looking at it, you know, kind of uh, looking at it under a microscope, and uh, just, just taking a quick quick look and, and going through it all. Um, does anyone else have comments? Chad, go ahead. I guess I just have a question for David and Chris, given that you guys do a lot of this community engagement across the nation. Do you have thoughts on a means of doing this, um, maybe electronically or some other means of doing it through some type of engagement type software or something where you know people wouldn't have to necessarily come together, but could still put their input on some of the stuff that's been shared or I guess there's people shaking their head they don't want that. So don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Director Beeble. Yep, there you go. Go ahead. The department heads met, you know, and, and if you lo looked at or heard tonight's presentation, uh, a lot of the discussion focused on internal operations. The At the end of the meeting, we did Agree, and I agree, there needs to be that bridge between what is the external, the larger community needs, and how do we fix the internal and bridge that gap. So that's why I think when you saw most of the findings tonight, there was a lot of internal focused. The last time we did this, I really think, you know, we, we really should talk collaboratively, council, staff, and you talk about being more inclusive and, and, and thinking together and listening to each other. What an opportunity to, let's focus now on the community aspects. From your perspective, we could also provide input in terms of what the internal, internal challenges are and what we need and what the gap is. And that way, we are build, building at least a closer a relationship in how we're gonna advance the community. Thank you, David. Um, Barb, you had a comment? Yep. Um, I agree, and that, that, that was my thought on this. I would rather go with a meeting of the alders so we can discuss, you know, where we're going to head because we are the ones that make that decision, and I'm, I'm never in favor of just a handful of people, people leadership, um, making that decision without letting the other alders in on what's going on. Bert and I talk about that pretty often about, you know, well, how do we let, get the other alder people in this so that they know what's going around? So I think I'd, I'd like to have a little get together, first a little time to absorb all that information and then to get together and uh, put your two cents worth in. Okay, thanks, Barb. And I, I, I agree with that sentiment. Anyone else have any comments? Chad? So let me ask you this question. Was, is the majority of the group by a head shake supportive of doing this on a Saturday morning? Or is this an evening after hours type of thing? Because that will help us trying to hone in with travel plans of the consultant because David is in Texas. So when would you prefer to do this? What would work the best in everyone's schedule? An evening workshop or a Saturday workshop? <laughs> I'm open to, uh, I'm I'll probably, 
I guess I would be prefer evening, but I would be open to Saturday myself. How else? I also, uh, do we have any? What a dutiful. <laughs> Show of hands, who wants to do an evening? Three choices. Evening, Saturday, or no preference. Evening? Evening. Raise your hand. Evening, raise your hand. All right, two, three. Saturday? Saturday. One. One. No preference. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess it's it's the it's the evening because there was three versus two. Yeah. Well, so I mean, and if 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 the if worse comes to worse, and we if Saturday is the only other the only option, then we have to we'll go with Saturday. You know, that's. Oh. I, I would just say this: uh, if, if if I might, we we will work with you in whatever form is the most useful and productive uh, for you, and. Um, you know, and 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 we will of course be there in person, and we'll do what it takes to make that happen. Okay. If that's your decision, David's excited okay. to come visit Sheboygan again. <laughs> I am. I, I am picking up surfing. Alder Salazar has a question here. Uh, thank you, Chair. So, um, we'll make sure to bring you some uh, mud pies or some good bakery. <laughs> but um, okay, just to echo some comments that I've heard that I, I think are really important. I appreciate what Trey said about. The SWOT analysis, I think that's important for us as alders to realize that the staff has done that, and I think that's important. I love to doing a SWOT analysis, but I also want to be thoughtful and mindful of that the staff have done that. So I guess I would um, ask sort of Baker Tilly or Chad, whoever's sort of leading this, to really think about how the alders can engage and how we can uh, sort of blend both uh, discussions together. I appreciate David saying sort of uh, having directors there and having this conversation about sort of focusing on the public, but I also want to make sure we're mindful of some of the internal operations because that will also hit budget. And as alders, we need to sort of think about that as well. Um, so uh, I know that's sort of a task at hand, but um, that's sort of my synopsis of, of sort of what we came out of today. But, so thank okay. you. Thank you. Bert, you, you um, I. The, the, all of the focus groups, the seven or nine or however many focus groups there were, um, those are our community. The, those were very carefully choken, uh, chosen. They were representative of people in the community who were not staff, who were not elected officials. That's the meat of what we can do because those are our constituents and they came to us in in various permutations of what they do every day in their lives. So that's the part that I would like to focus on. And then, then we correlate that with the city's focus on, we know day-to-day -day operations and we, we've done this for years and we know you do and we appreciate what you do. It's those other constituents that we have to really grapple with. Alrighty. Any other comments, suggestions? Okay. Um, and then seeing as the evening is late and there's no more questions, um, I guess we can leave the gentleman from Baker Tilly go, and uh, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Are you General Ty, <laughs> that is a general. I, 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 I just wanted to see, just, just for the. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah.